In Hebrews chapter 3, if you would, and I want you to look with me a moment in the Word of God, to Hebrews chapter 3. I don't want you to have a heart attack when I make this statement, but this is a culmination of three messages combined that I'm going to do in about 25, 30 minutes. So uh, can it be done? Uh, we'll see. But uh, I want to combine some things uh, in previous things that I have preached because I believe to do what I want to do, I need to do that. Once you find your place, let's stay in one more time. Hebrews chapter 3. Verse number 14, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 14. The Bible says, for we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, watch this, steadfast until the end. Unto the end. Let me read that again. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. You can be seated. The believers that Paul was addressing in the book of Hebrews are believers that were struggling because they were coming out of Judaism and they were going into Christianity. And because of that, Paul was telling them to hang on. Paul was telling them, he don't mean to hang on like there's the only way you can be saved. We know there's only one way of salvation. But Paul was letting them know that you've got to stay with the Lord, that you've got to stay fast. Verse 13, he tells them to exhort one another daily. He talks to them as brethren, you'll find, in verse number 12. And he talks to them as brethren in verse chapter 3, verse 1. And he lets them know that you need to stay fast until the end. I want you to think about a thought with me that I want to preach this morning. And the thought comes with this day of Labor Day. And this day in which we kind of feel like it's almost a hump into winter. And then the year will end. And what a year 2020 has been. Can I get a witness? It has been an interesting year. I think it's going to end well. I think November's going to end well. I think some other things are going to end well. I believe that this year is going to end, praise God, a whole lot better than it's been throughout the year. But for just a moment, I want to preach using a little bit of a play on words off of the verse that I read. And I want to preach on the thought, the end is in sight. The end is in sight. Now you can go a whole lot of ways with that. We know the rapture could be very well in any moment. And the end would be in sight. We know that we could die in our mortal body and the end would be in sight. But we also know that this is September and December 31st is coming and the end is in sight. This year started off with everybody having 2020 vision. And we've all pretty much been socked in the eye. We're blind by the time it's over. The end is in sight. But before I talk about a few things that can help you to get to the end of this year and stay in the end of this year, I want you to think about some things that we ought to be thankful for. First of all, we ought to be thankful for God's physical blessings in our life. If you're able to come to the house of God today, if you're able to worship God today, if you're able to get out of the bed this morning, if able to get up with your family, able to walk to the, uh, not walk in the house of God, drive to the house of God, if you physically in your life were able to do those things, you ought to be very thankful for your physical uh, blessings of this year. Amen. I'm thankful God let me live through September of this year, into September of this year with physical health. I'm glad of that. I'm thankful for that. Not only that, but we ought to be thankful in this year that we have been a part of for God's providing blessings. How many of you say the Lord's took care of you? 
I mean, listen, it's been nothing but bad news on top of bad news on top of bad news on top of bad news as far as the world is concerned and the media is concerned. But guess what? For the child of God, it's really not been that way. I'll be totally honest with you. God has blessed our mission program. God has blessed the church financially uh, to still be able to look at building a building for His glory. God has blessed us in a lot of ways. You say, preacher, why? Because, friend, I don't care how bankrupt Washington gets or how bankrupt this world gets, you cannot bankrupt heaven uh, and God can take care of it. Uh, and if the world runs out of change, God will give us dollar bills. Amen? You cannot outgive the Lord. I don't know about you, but God's been good to me this year. God's allowed me to provide to give my missions. God's allowed me to give my time. God's allowed me to do things and I enjoy things that He don't even have to allow me to do. God's allowed me to have things. Some of you may be more blessed this year financially, and I know some of you are, than you've ever been in your life. And God's been good to you. And God's blessed you. Friend, when you hear all the 2020 hoopla, don't forget, we got a God that meets our needs. We got a God that takes care of our problems. We have a God that supplies the need. Say amen right there. Amen. Brother Aaron, Miss Elisa, and I was so glad to see them walk in a little while ago. They come in here. Brother Aaron's a missionary. Brother Aaron relies on the support of God's people to take care of him. And what a joy he is with their 42nd youngin' they just had. What a joy he is is the fact, Brother Aaron, that God still meets the need. That God still takes care of us. That God still puts a roof over our head. That God still supplies each and everything that God still takes care of us. Matter of fact, let me just say this. God has so blessed us financially, mission-wise this year. I like to give Brother Aaron and Miss Elisa a little special love offering out of the missions. Just let them know we love them. What do y'all think about that? They're in Washington, D.C. trying to reach politicians. That's harder than anything you'll ever do. Amen? And I think we ought to just give them a little blessing. Let them know we appreciate them bringing another baby in this world, raising a godly home. And I think, well, Miss Lisa, threw four children, four children, uh, she ain't nowhere near catching up with her mama. But anyway, I want you to understand that, listen, God provides blessings in our life. Don't get past that. Then I want to thank God for His protective blessings. God's looked after us. You know what? We always talk about when things go on in our life. We always talk about, boy, I tell you what, I can't believe this happened and that happened to me. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you thank God for those days that nothing happened? When's the last time you thank God for the time you drove to work and you drove back home and you drove the vacation and you drove back home? What about all the days in your life? What is the major majority of your life where everything's been great in your life? We ought to thank God for His protective blessings in our life. But no doubt we have just lived through, I know in all my years, born in 1964, you know how you know when you're getting old? It's when you have to do something online and you have to do that little thing you flip to get to the day you were born and your finger gets tired getting to it. Hey Amen. You know you're getting older and you keep saying, 90 this, 90 that, 80 this, 80 that, 70, 70, 60, Lord, bottom of the 60s. Hey Amen. But I want you to understand, understand that God's been protective of us and God's took, taken care of us. As you look in the Word of God, the Bible says, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end, the Bible says, while it is said, today if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts to their provocation. What you find in the Word of God is Paul is letting those people know. He's letting them know, you've got to hold out. You've got to stand. And they were probably under so much more, Brother Crabtree, so much more pressure than we'll ever be under. Because they were coming out of Judaism and having to stand for Christ. And some of them were dying for Christ. Preacher, how do I, how do I make it to that end that's in sight? Let me give you some things to think about. This is one of the things that helps me. Number one, we ought to maintain our focus. Maintain our focus. Preacher, what is my focus? Here it is. Matthew 6, But seek ye first. Everybody say the word first. Guess what first means? It means not second. 
It means first. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. You know how that we can finish 2020 with a year we can look back on and we can say, boy, it's been a good year. It's when we kept our focus on the Lord and on who He is. We keep our focus on Christ. Amen. 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 It's easy to lose focus in the year like we've had, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Brother Russell, one of our missionaries here out of Calvary. Uh, Brother Russell not able to get into the prison. He's normally there as a chaplain every week. He's having to do other things because of that. It's been some kind of year. And I told him, uh, you know, you think about it, but his focus is reaching those men and women. His focus is doing that uh, for reaching them for Christ. Your focus is going to have to be, it's not this year and looking at all of the other things, but it's did you keep your eyes on the Lord? I was reading, a, I, was, I went to a barber shop up in the mountains a couple of days ago. I was up that way and I just wanted to one and somebody told me about and I sat down and it was owned by a Christian man. He had busy, one of the busy barber shops I've ever seen, probably six or seven chairs. Still almost had to wait an hour. It was busy. And of course people were bringing in five kids at a time and that keeps it busy. But anyway, uh, I, was, I was in there and I looked over the side of me and there was a there was a devotion book on the side of me. So, well, since I'm sitting here and I got to wait anyway, got my phone, got it on my Bible, got the devotion book out that was laying there, and uh, I, I opened up the devotional book and I began to look at it. And one of the things it was talking about in that devotional book, it was talking about it where I opened it up to, and I believe the Lord wanted me to make sure that I saw that. It was talking about that nothing becomes a priority in your life unless you love it more than other things. Boy, I was reading that thinking, man, that's the truth. Because if I love Christ like I ought to love Him, He will be a priority in my life. He will be the number one priority. How can you, uh, by the end of this 2020, uh, we're making it over the hump. Here we are in September. It's getting a little cooler. Before long, the leaves are going to change. Before long, we're going to be at Christmas. And before long, we're going to be on the marriage tree. And 2021 is going to be here. And I ask you a question. As we get through this mid-time, a little over the mid-year, here's the question. Are you going to maintain your focus on Christ? Amen. We have moms in this building, dads in this building. We have entrepreneurs in this building. We have businessmen, businesswomen in this building. We, we have people in a lot of different areas of your life. But I'm going to tell you this. We have pastors, leadership, preachers. Let me tell you this. If the focus is not Christ, number one, it will not be Christ at all. In order for us, we have to maintain our focus. We have to keep our eyes on the Savior, looking unto Jesus. We have to focus on sinners. And some of you have heard me preach this part of the message years ago. I put one thought in it here, and this is this. We have to focus on our start. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, and such were some of you. You've got to remember where God found you and where He brought you from. You've got to remember, listen, We've often said, have we not often said this, oh, if God never gave any more to me than what I have, that's more than I would ever. We say that. Well, if God never does another thing for me, that's fine because He saved me, that's enough. We say that, but we don't mean that. Because we do like when God does things for us. We do like when God meets needs. We do like when God gives us our wants and our desires. But here's the thing you've got to remember. You have to remember that really Christ is all we need. What helps me when the devil tries to discourage me is to focus on my start. It's to remember where I was and where I am now. And what God has done in my life. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. How do we make it to the end of this year? How do, we, how do we know the end is in sight? We maintain our focus. But then watch this. We also have to make sure that we are monitoring our fellowship. 
The Bible says in Acts 2, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking bread and in prayers. Listen, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. The Bible says, till I come, give attendance to reading. The Bible says that we are not forsake our assembling ourselves together. Man, with somehow, what do you mean, preacher? We have to make sure that we are monitoring our fellowship. We have to stay in church. Some of you are already seeing a bounce back by not being in the parking lot and by not being on the internet. You're already seeing it. You know you're seeing it. There's something about the house of God and worshiping with God's people. Amen. 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 You can't substitute it. God never intended to be substituted. God never intended anything else to replace it. The assembling of God's people together. You need to make up your mind. You're not going to let the devil. You're not going to let the world. You're not going to let anything get you away from the fellowship. Don't let it take you out of church. It's not worth it. Amen. Amen. How many believe it's important? Amen. Then I want to say this, and I believe this. We need to have a mountain of faith. <laughs> Remember what I said a while ago about praying? I said this. I said we all need to pray, but we need to pray believing, not just praying and saying words. Matthew 17, 20, the Bible says, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say in this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. We've got to have faith in our struggling times. Job said it well, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Amen. You say, preacher, it's been tough. Yeah, Brother Kevin will be here tonight. We praise the Lord for that. He, he'll be, probably be in the car, but he'll be here tonight. Seventy days in the hospital. Three quarters, five-eighths of that on a ventilator. Think you've had a bad year. And he'll be here tonight. Faith in struggling times. Every time Miss Amy from the hospital, every time Miss Becky, even Brother Kevin to him, every time they would hashtag a statement to me, they would put the words, God can. See, sometimes we pray, but by the time we pray and we're getting up, we're already doubting uh, that God's going to do it anyway, and we're all guilty of that. And when we do that, that's not praying with faith. That's not praying with faith. That's just speaking words. What good does it do to believe God can, but by the time we get off our knees, we think God won't? Anybody guilty besides me of that? Oh, absolutely. My wife to this day, 100%, without a doubt, is praying that God will heal this eye that I had this eye stroke in. 100%. The other day, we was riding down the road, and I did my normal thing, closed my good eye and was looking with the other one driving, and I can drive okay with it, just don't stop quick in front of me, but I was driving, and I don't do that unless it's, I want to, but I was driving, and while I was driving, I told her, I said, this eye still ain't no better. She looked at me with audacity, and she said, it ain't going to be no better till you start believing God can do it. I'm like, do you know who the preacher is? She said, yeah, he taught me that. Amen. Don't you hate it when your wife is right? Man, I'm telling you, nothing worse in this world than have a wife that's right. Amen. She said, you just got to believe it. You help me to believe it. You know, then I'll give her some deal with, well, you, I, I live with it, you don't, I don't care. She said, I live with it too. 
we got to have faith through this year. We still got to have faith that there's some good in America. We got to have faith that there's good in some young people. We got to have faith that there's even some good somewhere deep down, way down, way down in the government. Amount of faith. We got to have faith in struggling times. Then I want to give you some of this, and I think this will help you. You got to have faith in stagnant times. When nothing's going on. Brother James, it'd be easy for us to have faith if every week another check rolled in and we were $200,000 to the good. I've never been $200,000 to the good, but that would have to feel good. Praise God, I've been in my life before $2 worth of good would have felt good. But I want you to watch this. We get to the time in our life when nothing's happening. You ever been there? Just nothing. Not really bad. Not really good. Just kind of, blah. You don't quit having faith when it's like that. Amen. It's kind of like when you're trying to lose weight and you hit them things they call, what is it just when you hit a number and you just stick on that number? What do y'all say? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I've done that enough. I know. You get up and you think, well, man, I didn't eat that piece of cheesecake. I stayed away from that food Miss Stephanie fixed me. And man, I'm going to get up in the morning and it's going to be lower. Same number. And you look at the scales and you say, I could have ate that and still been that number. Because you're stuck. If you ain't careful in days like we're living in right now, you get stuck spiritually. Do you know there's a lot of people just going through the motion? A lot of people just going, riding it out. I don't want to be that way. I've never been that way. I don't want to be that way. I'm not that way in anything in my life. If I go at it, I go at it hard. Amen? I go at it with everything I got. I just can't. I can't live like that. Stagnant. You know what happens? You guys, country boys, know what I'm talking about? If you get a pond, don't have no water coming in, it's going out, you get a pond, it's called stagnant water. You know what grows in stagnant water? Nothing but filth. You cannot get stagnant. You have to stay strong. How do you do it? You've got to have, you've got to have a faith. Amen. One of my favorite books of the Bible, definitely my favorite book on revival. Are y'all with me? Say Amen. One of my favorite two verses in the Old Testament is Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17. Let this get in your heart. Listen to this. Here's what God said. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. My soul. Right? Nothing. Nothing. But I didn't read all the verse. I said, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. You know what we say? God, if you fill up the barn, give me that new vet. I ain't talking about the doctor for the dog either. If you fill up, that, fill up my barn, give me that new vet. Give me so much money, I don't know what to do with it. God, if you'll bless this and bless that, Lord, I'm going to serve you and tell you how much I love you. I got news for you. What God is saying really to us is this. You're going to have to be faithful to me even in stagnant times. Amen. 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 We've been blessed 18 years. Right 18 years here, I think October, Miss Wendy, about 18 years that I've been in Calvary. We have always seen God, and this ministry's grown. It's been blessed in 18 years. God has been good to us. 
And he's going to be good to us this year. I'm as excited right now as I've ever been. I'll be honest with you. I'm not worried about any pandemic or any, any man in an office that's going to change the fact that God's still on the throne. Can I get a witness? But can I say this to you right now? And I mean this with all my heart. I believe without a shadow of a doubt in my life, the best could be yet to come. But we cannot get stagnant and just sit still. We've got to have faith in steady times as well. Even when things are going real good. Don't forget the blesser when you get blessed. Some people get their new job, all of a sudden not at church. Boy, if God would give us a healthy baby, and he does, and you stay home every week. Well, preacher, I don't want the baby to be disruptive. It's called a nursery. And what some people need to learn is also called a woodshed. They get to a certain age, quit pampering them and let them know you ain't going to act like that. Right? I mean, I know you can't take an infant down behind the building. Say, don't go take off running now, that little redhead fella. Well, take out more than would you. No, don't do that. But there will come a day. You just got to say, hey, buddy. But you got to stay faithful. Right? God gives you that new job. You can't let that job. Remember, what do we start out with? Seek ye what? First. You get messed up is when the priorities in your life and when the love in your life goes the wrong way. And what's the thing is, God will let you enjoy things and have things. God will do that. But you start putting them in front of Him, He can just take them away as quick as He gave them to you. Amen. Amen. So our verse today is simply talking about to the people of God, the Hebrew children that have come out of Judaism got saved. Paul was encouraging them to stay with the stuff. But the message to us is the end's in sight. It ain't time to jump ship now. Amen. Put up the sails. Let the wind get in them. And keep on going for God. Amen.